Welcome everybody to the next episode of Wealth Without Borders. And I'm delighted to have with me today, Alan Hepburn. Welcome, Alan. Hi, good morning, Harold. Good morning. So uh, whereabouts are you uh, today and what's the weather like, Alan? Currently in Singapore. I should be in Shanghai, but are waiting for things to change. The weather's very Singapore, sunny and warm. Right, humid, I, I expect. Yes, lots yes. of that. Well, we'll we're here in Shanghai and we're ready to welcome you back whenever you can make it. Right. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know Alan, Alan designs, builds and facilitates high impact boards. And high impact boards is in fact the title of today's podcast. And so Alan, I do uh, run a very tight ship. It's going to be eight questions in eight minutes. And okay. I'm going to start the stop clock if you're ready. Are you ready to go? I am, yes. Fantastic. So question number one, who is your ideal client, Alan? I guess, Howard, uh, companies that have decided to grow, they've made that decision. They're not, they're not going to survive the next few months. They're going to grow. Um, typically, CEOs and chairmen who have got open minds and they're listening and they're comfortable to learn. Okay, fantastic. Seven minutes, 39 remaining. Question number two, what's the problem that you solve? Well, basically we help companies to achieve their business goals. And, and we, we do that through delivering quantifiable strategic impact, either through an advisory board or working with a fiduciary board. So whatever the company goals are, we help them hit as fast as possible. Okay, so it's achieving goals, really, if you want to call that a problem or an ambition. Uh, seven minutes and eight seconds remaining. Question number three, what are the typical symptoms that people experience who have these goals or these problems? Well, we've all been to boards where um, there's a 150-page PowerPoint and the CEO bangs on for about two, three hours, despite the fact they sent it out to you two weeks ago and you've already read it. Um, we ask CEOs what impact they think boards give their, on their companies out of 10, typically globally, it's about three out of 10. And we ask directors what impact they think they're having, it's about seven to eight. So there's a huge delta there. So the symptoms really are low impact meetings where very little is done to actually help drive the business. Right, got you. And obviously a clear difference in perception between mm. impact and true results. Okay, six minutes, 16 remaining. Question number four, what are the common mistakes that people make when they're trying to solve this problem, have you found? Well, what we tend to see, and it's in all parts of the world, is you know, board meetings, typically, traditionally, you have management educating the board, telling them all the things that have happened in the past, you know, droning through long reports, making long presentations, and then maybe at the end, there's a little bit of time for any kind of Q&A and maybe a couple of suggestions here and there. So really it's somewhere, it, we would say it's exactly the other way around. What it should be is to have your directors there educating management. How can they help management and how can they help them either between board meetings with introductions, with advice, with suggestions, leverage their experience, but really have management listen and boards talking rather than the other way around. Right, so it's really a reversal of the traditional dynamic going on there. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, fantastic. Five minutes, 18 remaining. Question number five. Um, what's one valuable free action that the audience who are checking the show today can implement? It's going to help them solve some of the problem, not all of it, obviously. We gather a lot of data. We, we metric everything in the boards that we run. And we've been doing this for almost 15 years. So we have a lot of data. But I can tell you, if you're taking one thing away from, from this podcast, if you evaluate your board members, you'll increase the impact of your board by about 50%. There are better and worse ways to evaluate, but just by the process of evaluating board members, you'll have a better board. Okay, very useful. That which you measure, you can improve. And four minutes, 29 remaining. Question number six. What's one valuable free resource that you could direct people to that will further help them with their problem? So, and I've used this in all different types of business, but it, it equally applies uh, in, in the area of, of high impact boards. And that's psychometric testing. Square pegs in square holes. You can have a great, great process, but if you don't have the right people, 
you're not going to get optimum results. So actually building a model, and there are companies that do that, and we have our own, and there are other companies that can do it for you, building a model of exactly what you're looking for. Because people are very good in interviews at portraying themselves, but that's not necessarily who you get in a board meeting. What we've learned over the years, Howard, is that the skills and the whole persona that people develop to succeed in the business world, in many cases, in more than 50% of the cases, that's not actually who people are. They've learned to be that person because it works in the corporate world. But in a boardroom, you don't get that person. People come in there without P&L responsibility. They don't run your business. They get parachuted in two, three times a year, and they're there as experts. So you get the real person, and that can be a very different person from the one you would find in corporate life. So a lot of the very successful CEOs that we test, we would never place on boards. Right. Interesting. Yes. Uh, I don't want to use up too much time, but we'll talk further on that subject. And can you provide a link perhaps to a free form of testing? Yeah, I'm sure, uh, yes, I'm, I'm sure we can. Yes. Okay, fantastic. So two minutes, 49 remaining. Uh, Alan, what concept or book or program or talk has been the most impactful in your experience? Well, I, I think the, um, the, there's a, a gentleman who I listened to uh, just last week, frankly, uh, Professor Nero at the London Business School. And basically, it's about how we, are, how we create bias uh, in, in decision making. And we all bring those biases into every situation. And at least it's being aware that we do have a bias. And it allows us to see the situation that you're trying to deal with with a little more clarity. And it's just like, you know, there's lots of techniques you can learn, but just the fact you're aware that you have bias can be a tremendous advantage when you actually come to make a good decision. Well, I'll hardly endorse that. There's bias everywhere in uh, my profession. <laughs> so uh, one minute, 53 remaining. Uh, question number eight. What's the one question that I really should have asked you that would have given great value to our audience? And what's the answer? Do virtual boards work? Um, the short answer, Howard, and we, we've discovered this over the last three months, um, many of our clients have moved their board meetings with no, no, they had no option onto Zoom and various other platforms. So the answer is yes, it does work. We would never have even, uh, have even raised this as an option, particularly with fiduciary boards. But in fact, um, we, we found around the world, um, the clients are quite comfortable and we're having very good results. And we're, again, we're metricing the output from those boards. So yeah, virtual advisory boards, virtual fiduciary boards can work. They can drive uh, a lot of impact. And of course, they're, they're perhaps a little more time efficient and cost efficient. Fantastic. Well, you've been extremely time efficient. You've come in with, with almost a minute to spare. So Alan, thank you so much for packing a tremendous amount of really practical advice and wisdom into a tremendously short time. No, you're welcome, Howard. It's been my pleasure. Thanks so much for being on the show. Many thanks for checking out Wealth Without Borders podcast. I'd love you to head over to iTunes, subscribe and leave us a review. And if you'd be kind enough to do that, I would really appreciate it. And then if you want to know more about what I do, check out wealthwithoutborders.net.